Hi there, it's Carol, it's Friday Sews, and as you can see behind me, ta-da! I've got over a thousand subscribers, absolutely amazing, absolutely incredible, no one can believe it, especially me. Thank you, Jen. Hashtag Friday Sews has been a life changer for me. I've got to know so many fantastic people. Get involved, either be a watcher, check everybody out, or start becoming a creator yourself. I've got so much to say this week. I've got so much to say. I'm going to try and pack it into a such a small slot. Um, I've got a new machine. I've got um, a collaboration I want to announce. Um, the things I've made. Um, I've got some new fabric. And aha! Right, okay, what should we start with? Um, start with the things I made. Now, uh, remember last week I showed you an awful beige linen pair of trousers I'd made a couple of years ago. Um, it was this pattern. I'm not saying it's a bad pattern at all, it's just the fabric I chose was just hanging. It was just awful. And because it was really light, it had um, these side pockets and it just dragged the whole thing down. It was not flattering at all. I made the elasticated cuff. Um, I chopped this off about a year ago because I didn't like that and that wasn't working either. And it's been sat there waiting for me to do something with it. But I've made it. I'm really happy with it. I took off the side pockets. I did something different with the bottom. I took my inspiration actually from this pattern I've got. It's out of print now, 2414. Um, I've actually made the crop trousers before, but it had the uh, ruching gathering on the side just to bring up the hem because I couldn't decide where the hem had to be. Um, so I had a go at that and I'm really pleased with it and it makes them really comfortable. Um, that's quite a good little pattern as well, I must say, it says one hour. So I am really pleased with some seeing the photos. I've still got the pockets in the back. But as I say, I made these two channels. Um, I've got a bit of twill tape. I changed the twill tape on the front to kind of match it. And I can wear them down, I can wear them up, but it just made them look really different because without anything, without the pockets, it was just boring. So, yay, I can wear them now. Uh, the second thing I'm really pleased about was um, do you remember last week I had that awful grey fabric and I know a lot of you said it didn't look bad but in reality it was a, not a nice grey at all. So I dyed it with some machine dye fabric that I had in the cupboard. It had been there for a long time. Um, maybe I should have shaken it up a bit. It, that bit of fabric dyed quite well apart from the bottom was a bit blotchy. Um, but there were some other things I put in with it, just a couple of old towels and things that the, the dye wasn't quite so good. Anyway, came out the colour I wanted, so that was perfect. I showed it to my husband, who kind of had an inkling what I was doing, but got a bit confused. Hold it up and I said, so what do you think? And he went, yeah, it'd make a really good barbecue cover. And I said, no, this was for my shorts. So... Standing joke now, these are going to become my barbecue cover shorts. So here they are in all their glory. Um, I went to town a bit. I put a contrasting waistband in. Now, I am really thrilled with these. I know they won't be to everybody's taste, but what I wanted was um, I used my favourite, one of my favourite shorts pattern, again, out of print, quick sew, um, 3614. I make the middle length, so halfway between that one and that one. Um, they do have side pockets, um, but what I do is I put back pockets on as well, taken from it's taken from a birder pattern, because I am one of these awful people that carry my phone in my back pocket. So I like to put pockets on every trouser I make. Now for the side pockets, which is what I wanted, I wanted kind of this cargo look. I used, do you remember I made some um, cargo shorts for my husband? Well, that was the kind of pocket that I was after. So I dug the pattern pieces out. And as you can see, it's enormous. I didn't realise. I mean, it, you do pleat it in and it does reduce it a bit. But I thought there's no way that that's going to fit on my leg. So what I did is I actually reduced it down to half. So that's half of that size. 
And that was about right. Um, there it is there. The only thing I would say is maybe, I can put my phone in there, but I can't close this. So if I did it again, I'd make it just a tad longer and then I could put my phone in there. But this is just what I wanted. I like the look of them. Um, they're gonna be great. And then linen, so needs a bit of softening up. So that was an achievement, sorted those shorts out. And then the week I lost track a bit. I was gonna be making some stuff, um, something with the cars fabric. I made the cars bag for my grandson but I misunderstood what my daughter wanted. So I made quite a big bag when actually she only had a few cards. So I've now got to make a smaller bag. Sure, you can use the other bag easily because I think at the end of the year when it's his birthday, she's changing his bedroom all over to the cars theme. So what I might do with that other bit of fabric is hold that back because I might make something out of it for his bedroom then. Um, so I've got to make another small little bag. And then I lost track with the week and I made another jumpsuit, <laughs> completely off the rails. Um, this is a jumpsuit that I made, it's a great pattern, um, McCall's 8218. I made this um, a year ago, I think, in a light blue fabric. And I think I showed you one of my earlier videos. I never wore it because I felt it was a bit pajamery. The fabric just needed to be a bit darker. And I was determined to make this again because this would be a good sort of eveningy um, thing for a holiday we've got coming up at the end of the month. I just wanted something a bit eveningy, but very casual, easy to throw on. So I made it out of this fabric, and as you can see, I'm really pleased with it. It is a good pattern. There is a good tutorial on it, I think. I think it's by Brittany J. Jones. I'm not sure. Um, a couple of people have made it. It's a bit sort of mind blowing in the way they because it's got an a bodice and then an overlayer and it's all a bit confusing how you put the two pieces together and all the way along you're thinking this can't be right this can't be right is it right yeah yeah it's right and it kind of all works out but it's like that all the way along apart from when you do the trousers which is simple um but it is a good make i am pleased with it so that is going to be worn in the evenings and it doesn't look like pajamas so I'm quite happy with that. So those are the things I made this week. Um, I didn't get very far with the barbecue cover that I said I was, well, I, did, I said it was gonna be in the future. This is as far as I got with it. Um, but when I was in the shop, I was chatting to the lady because I wanted some, obviously it was, I think it was outdoor waterproof cover I went for. It's really thick, sort of almost like tarpaulin. Um, so I got that and she was saying, oh, what are you making? And I said, a barbecue cover. And she went, oh, I made one of those two years ago, never again. Now that scared me. She said, it's a two man job. She said, you're feeding the fabric and you need someone the other side to pull it. And I said, well, can I do it on a normal machine? And she sort of shrugged, well, I had a heavy duty machine. So I thought, right. Now, in my mind, I have thought about getting a new heavy duty machine because even when I'm doing things like jeans, even making those hats, um, I've got a fantastic two-year-old Janome machine, but it doesn't like the width of fabric that I used to put through my 30-year-old Janome machine. So anyway, I was looking online and I found a very old new home heavy duty machine. I'll show it to you. It's well, it's new home, which then became Janome. Um, it's uh, from a man who services machines, he serviced my machines, so I kind of knew him. He's given me a 12 month warranty, but my goodness, I put layers and layers of fabric through it to test it and it just chunked its way through them. So it's gonna be really good. When I get around to making the barbecue cover, I'm sure it's gonna be really good. Now, another thing I had this week, which I have to tell you, I had a package from the United States of America. I had it from, of course, this color, had to be blue, had to be from Jen. She sent me some patterns. She um, has a lot and lots and lots and lots of old patterns. And I had my eye on a couple, um, but she ended up sending me six. Very naughty of her, but they are really welcome. Now they're all sorts of different things. 
Um, they're all, I think, out of date. Um, but this was a McCall's dress, uh, McCall's 7591. And the intriguing thing about it, it's actually a wraparound dress, which doesn't look like from the front. A very simple top and trouser pattern. And I love the shape of that. That's, um, I think it's got a drop shoulder, that top. And I like the hem on that. This one, I particularly like this one here, the flutter sleeves and that lovely tie detail. So that's new look 6470. And it's got a nice skirt. Actually, my mum would really like that shape skirt. That's one of her kind of favourites. This, I'm really interested in its easy to sew simplicity 7196. But I love those, look at those crop trousers. I'm definitely going to give that a go because I'm always looking for crop trouser patterns. And it's got side pockets. It's got the fly. So I'm looking forward to that. This was when I also had my eye on, I think it's still around, Simplicity 8856. I, if you look at the line drawings, it's just like a really interesting top. There, it's got that straight panel there and the pockets. And I think that could be nice and autumn -y wear. So that's another one for the list. And this one here, I very much like these tops here. I thought they'd be nice evening sort of uh, wintry tops. Um, probably wouldn't make it uh, be v-neck because that looks a bit low for me. Um, but, so thank you so much, Jen, for that amazing surprise. Now, oh, I forgot to tell you, when I was in the shop buying the barbecue fabric, there was a beautiful roll of viscose chamois and I had my eye on it. I picked it up, but I put it down. I thought, no, I don't need any more. I don't need any more. So I then went to buy this barbecue fabric, um, barbecue cover fabric, and lo and behold, there was a little piece of that same viscose on the cutting table. Some of you obviously hadn't. And I thought, I love it, I love it. I'm gonna to have to buy it because I know if I don't buy it, I'll regret it. So this was it. And again, it's quite autumnal. I'm thinking ahead now, but it's got, it doesn't come out quite right on the screen, but it's like an olive green, um, oh, it's such a pretty little ditzy floral print. So I had to buy that. Cheered me up after buying the barbecue fabric. Now, um, I have bought some other fabric this week as well. I went, I was still on the hunt. This was still on the hunt for barbecue fabric. And I saw this. Now this to me screamed Simplicity 8640. I just thought I've got to, it's a Visco Chalet. Um, I'm going to have a go at making another one of those because that is tropical and that is Florida. That's screaming Florida to me. And another piece of fabric that I picked up was this. Now, I know this isn't my colour. I know that, but I love it. And I actually have it in a green. I made a top out of it um, as a green base. Again, all to me colours. I know it does nothing for me, but uh, does that always matter? I don't know. Now, I will be doing, in September, Michelle from Michelle Sews Again is doing a humongous challenge. She's doing a humongous collaboration with about 30 different people uh, on YouTube, um, from craft people to sewing people, all sorts. And it's called the hashtag purple to end ALZ, which is a Alzheimer's. Um, awareness month apparently in September so purple is their colour so we're all doing something purple and I'm doing a collab with her uh, we're both doing now I'm very much big four patterns I I'm not a fan of indie patterns as you know because I can't be bothered with the printing and they cost so much so she's very much indie pattern so I've chosen a big four pattern and she's choosing a relatively similar indie pattern. I won't reveal the pattern just yet, but I will show you the two fabrics I'm gonna use. Now these two together, now I know it's not a perfect match, but one is a viscose jersey and one is a cotton jersey. And my idea is the top I've got is to use those two together. Gonna to see how that works. But so that's going to be, um, I think I'll 
give you a link to her Friday or so's last week where she talked about the whole challenge. Um, I think there's going to be prizes, hashtag to everybody to get involved. So I'll link that above and um, I'm sure I'll tell you more about this as we go along. Now, my lovely father, he's in his mid 80s and he loves woodwork. He's got a shed in his garden and he's never happier than in his shed creating little things and he's so clever. Whenever I ask him to make something or come up with something, he can find a way. Now I had in my mind, I've got lots of machine needles and I'm really careless with them. When I use them, I take them out of the packet and then if I'm swapping them to another one, I tend to just put them in a pincushion. And then I can never remember what they are, of their stretch or their universal. And I don't know if, like me, I cannot read those numbers on the side. Even when they put colours on them, I'm still confused because I can never remember what the colours refer to. So um, I'm very, very short-sighted. And the only way I can read the numbers is in the evening when I take up my contact lenses, I can then read super close and I can read the numbers on the needles. But apart from that, I wanted a way to keep them all separate. So I asked my dad if he could come up with some sort of box with holes in, um, with a separation, and then I could keep my needles in various places. And this is what he's come up with it. Now, I've done my own bit of decorating on it. He gave me the box and I've done a bit of tarting up and fancy, but I'm really so excited to use this. So the needles all fit absolutely perfectly in there. Um, they don't rattle around or anything. We've made sure the depth, we made sure that they're not touching the bottom of the box. So there's enough depth for them there. But um, I just got some sticky lettering and I did stretch, fine, heavy and general because we couldn't think what to do <laughs> for that one. But I love my little box. So they're all now in the neat little slots. So thank you very much, Dad. Really appreciate it. It's going to save me a lot of time from thinking which needle is which. So what are, after all that, what am I going to do next week? Right. Well, I haven't done anything on the Lutterlo, so I'm going to have a go at um, this dress I talked about. Um, I haven't got quite the right fabric for it, but... I'm going to give it a go anyway and what I've got, but I still need to have a go at this dress. Now I'm going to use this. It's a chambray light, very light with a slight dot on it. I think that could work quite well, um, need a nice drape, but I don't want it to look like it's a tent on me. That's why I'm a little bit concerned about doing it, but because I'm not too worried about this fabric, I'm going to give it a go. So I hadn't done anything on the Lutterlo this week, but I've got a free weekend coming up. So I'm going to have a go at that next week. And the other thing I want to do is make another of my New Look 6517. I love these crop trousers. I do reduce them a little bit. I've got a white pair of cropped canvas linen trousers, but they are exhausted. They've had many, many years of wear. And I hate to say it, but I put on a little bit more weight over the last couple of years. So I need a pair of cropped white linen trousers and I've got, I think will be the right weight linen. Got to be a bit careful with white trousers as a woman you know, the underwear that we wear underneath. And if I was a more professional sewer, I would probably line the trousers, but I haven't got a clue how to do that or the inclination. So I'm going to have a go making those. Obviously the barbecue cover has got to be done. Um, I don't have the barbecue, it's in Kent. I live in Dorset, um, but I'm gonna to have to try and build something of the same kind of shape and dimensions so I can kind of work over it. Um, I think that's it. I've covered absolutely everything. I can't believe I've managed to get through it all. Thank you again for watching. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Lots of sewing or crafting or whatever you're into. And I'll see you again soon. Well, before you go, a lot of people have asked me about my dog. He, you see him every now and again in a photo. 
He's 13 years old. He's not very photogenic. He's not a sort of dog that I can sit on my lap. But I thought I'd put some footage in of what he loves to do best. He got a forest over the road with a lovely bit of water. And I just thought I'd show you where he is in his element. In water, in mud, having a fantastic time chasing cones. So see you again. Bye.